what's up welcome back to my channel what's the tea this week i hope everyone's having a great week if you hear it start raining i can't help that it's been raining for like 45 years here in texas i just can't even deal with the weather anymore so i apologize for that but hopefully it doesn't because i've been waiting to film because it's literally been a downpour each day but anyways jumping into today's video we're going to talk about tips that I have to survive the floor as a new grad which I've kind of talked about here and there in some of my videos like I wouldn't do this here's a tip here's a scenario but I haven't laid it all down like my most you know recommended tips or my most you know things that I have seen on the floor when dealing with new grads or myself because I was a new grad once we were all there so I'm going to go over them and you know different scenarios that I have. Maybe they'll help you on the floor getting your adjustments. It's that time of year where everybody's graduating. We got new grads rolling out. So hopefully this will help somebody. Um, so let's go into it. Number one, I would say is be confident. You know, there's a fine line between being confident and being cocky. Don't go in there being over cocky, thinking you're a know-it-all, thinking you're better than someone. Be humble, please. But also, don't go in there and let people give you the runaround and run over you. Find your voice because I've seen it a lot where, you know, people have that personality where they're more, you know, shy, timid, soft-spoken, and people just, like, railroad them. Like, they just are easily, you know, pushed to the side, easily just not confident and insecure and things like that. Stand up for yourself. Find your voice. Be confident, learn how to speak up for yourself. Don't take any crap from anyone, but also be humble and, you know, just be nice because at the end of the day, there's so many different personalities working on the floor, not just with nurses, but, you know, therapists, lab, doctors. So it's going to be an adjustment to get used to all that. You're going to have to have those communication skills where it's like you need to get your point across, but you don't want to come off as, you know, the B word, but you also don't want to come off you know, as not strong enough, you know, this job is about advocating for your patients. And sometimes, well, a lot of times people will question you and question your judgment and come to you for recommendations or different things like that. And you need to be confident in your practice. So that's something that might be a learning curve for people, but eventually you'll find your voice. But just pre-warning, people will take advantage or try to run over you. Don't let that happen. Stand on them 10 toes strong. Another thing that I would say is, you know, in dealing with different personalities, it's also good, I'm looking at my little note, is how to take criticism, constructive criticism. There's a difference between a hater and someone that's trying to help you. With that being said, you're gonna get a lot of constructive criticism. You know, I would do it this way, or you know, next time can you, it's really supposed to be done like that, and different things like that. Don't get too sensitive. That's just how people are in this field. They're just telling you how it's preferred for next time. Make a mental note and do it that way. Cause even in my job right now, I just transitioned to the research side. So it is kind of a learning curve. And I even got an email the other day where someone was like, hey, don't send it to this email because it sends it to like 100 people. Send it to this email next time, blah, blah, blah. But the way she worded it was kind of like snippy. But, you know, I'm just like, eh, it just rolls off my back. But you will get that kind of, you know, do it this way next time. That wasn't that good. Just kind of go with it. Just know that eventually you'll get your groove and people aren't trying to be mean. It's just they take this is serious business like somebody's you know medical information their life blah 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 is at stake so just take it with a grain of salt don't take it personally don't beat yourself up different things like that going into that uh constructive criticism number three don't beat yourself up because mistakes will be made it's going to be a huge learning curve going from school clinicals to the floor and actually practicing and even like to the floor being with the preceptor and then transitioning to you know by yourself it's going to be a huge learning curve you will make mistakes hopefully not a mistake that will kill someone fingers crossed but you know tiny things like hey you didn't document this right or hey you know this dressing change it was changed at this time and you didn't change it or you missed it or something like that 
hopefully, you know, nothing, nothing bad has ever happened that, you know, to me like that. But, you know, staying on top of it, don't beat yourself up. You know, I had someone one time come to me, they were like, well, you know, I don't think I gave the insulin on time, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, girl, like there's nothing you can do. They're working with therapy. They had this test going on. You gave the insulin, they're not going to die. End of discussion. Like those things happen. But, you know, if it's like, you know, it's 10 a.m. and a critical came in at, you know, 7.30, 8 a.m. and you still haven't seen it, girl, what are you doing? Like, you know, pick and choose different things. But even if you, you know, didn't see that critical, you caught it before the end of your shift, you turned it in or, you know, you fixed it before you left home and the patient is still okay, don't go home and beat yourself up about it. It's going to be a learning experience and you're going to remember it I for sure for next time and you're going to get better at it from what you have learned from that mistake. So mistakes will happen. It's not the end of the world. We all will try within our 12 hour shift. Try not to kill anyone. Fingers crossed. It hasn't ever happened. I've come across. So you will make it. You will be okay. Another thing that I will say, piggybacking off of that, when you make mistakes and just in general in your practice when you're going on the floor, seek out learning opportunities. Don't just, you know, sit like a bump on a log and wait for them to come with you. Be proactive and things like that. Talk to the charge nurse, talk to other nurses or your preceptor or even after you're offered training with your preceptor, be like, hey y'all, if anything cool happens today or you need a second hand with something, you know, I haven't given blood yet, let me go with you on that. I haven't seen this kind of dressing change or I haven't seen, you know, any kind of cardiac issues or different things like that. Just especially tell a charge nurse, like she'll find somebody in there will find you something to do. And it's just good to see, you know, different things, whether you're not taking care of the patient or not. So when you do take care of a patient, like with that chest tube or that high flow or different things like that, you're prepared in different, you know, scenarios. So definitely seek out learning opportunities, even, you know, though you're done with like your precepting and all that stuff still be continuously learning and even when you're on your own and just be proactive and don't just like wait for things to come to you it's going to make you a better nurse it's going to give you like rapport with you know different people they're going to people like that when you reach out for opportunities the managers like that the charge nurses like that everyone just thinks that's just chef's kiss it was on my list and i somehow missed it but another great tip always ask questions no question is a stupid question do not let people give you slack for asking questions it is always better safe than sorry and you won't regret it another thing i will say speaking of rapport with the other nurses i personally think it's a smart idea to get involved with the people that have been there the longest every unit has that one nurse that has been there for like 15 16 20 something odd years some of them are grouchy some of them are not it's just kind of like you got to go with the feel of people which you should make friends with all your co-workers but i always make it a point to like try to be cool with them try to be cool with the older lady that's been there a while or man the grouchy one or something like that because they know all the tea they know where everything is they will have your back if you get in with them they will period that's somebody you want to have on your side at my old job, I was like A1 with the clerk that had been there for like years. She knew everything. She was a nurse, but she knew she was my right-hand man when things would go down when I started charging by myself. She knew every number, where to go, every contact, what to do, this and that, period. She was my bestie. And a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, some people didn't get along with her, found her to be abrasive, blah, blah, blah. That was my right-hand man, period. And one of the older nurses, like, she was charging and, like, she trained me and stuff. So I was able to, you know, grow with the help of them. Like, I couldn't do it without them. You know, those kind of relationships are very important to have when I say, especially if you're new anywhere, but especially if you're a new grad. Having someone you feel, you know, that you can trust on that has been there for years, that it has so much knowledge, it's just perfect. It's just great. So I would make it a point, you know, to just... Get in, get in with the right people. Stay away from the troublemakers. Try to find your, align yourself with people that are good at the job. You don't want to be aligned with, you know, the lazy nurse that's always late. Different things, no matter how cool they are, no matter how cool they are, or the problematic people that don't want to work. 
get yourself with good people especially the people that's been there a while that's good that knows how to take charge get with them another thing that i will say a lot of this is my number one thing i say new grads have a problem with is delegation period a because they're new they don't know anybody so why would they delegate things to do b they just want to handle everything themselves because a they don't want to miss out on anything they feel like they're going to miss out on anything and then number three they just don't even think about it like it just over their over their head so if you need like a blood pressure you need to collect some urine you need to do little petty tasks like i don't know so I don't know different things like even like go and get ice sometimes you know you don't want to be an asshole and be like hey so and so tech can you go get a blanket can you go get ice but hey if they're not busy and sitting down and you're really busy trying to get through med pass they most likely won't mind if you're cool to them and be like hey can you get this for me real quick blah 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 it's not gonna be a big deal hey you ask if it is a big deal to them go on about your business do your job circle back with them and write an email later but anyways you know hopefully you come to a good team and everybody's working together and they have that open collaboration but always ask for help always try to delegate little tasks if you're super busy and drowning especially when you see other people sitting down or something ask for help if they don't want to help you escalate that to the charge nurse ask them for help somebody on that floor is going to help you do something so instead of like trying to drown and get everything done you're going to end up making a mistake or missing something so it's better to try to delegate those tasks and if you don't feel safe delegating it because you don't think it'll get done delegate it to someone circle back and like within you know within a reasonable amount of time like 15 20 30 minutes and if they don't do it then there's your chance to do it but you got a little bit of other stuff done so that's my tip delegate if you don't trust someone to do it try to delegate it to someone else or delegate it and then circle back around always make sure the task is done when you do delegate so one more thing i have my little list y'all know i'll be looking at stuff um hmm. again with delegation and just working the floor go with your gut that's my another another thing about being confident delegating different things will happen you will always want to go with your gut something isn't right the patient isn't looking right or you know you told the doctor this and they're not worried about it always you can always escalate your concerns it's not the end all be all you know if the doctor told you something and you're just like oh, they're not looking right something is off maybe we should run this lab you know you can always escalate to your charge nurse they can escalate you know to the manager or administration somebody and, you know at the end of the day if the doctor does doesn't say that they want to give you the test you can always document that you saw this you expressed it cover yourself because you know next shift you know you saw somebody they weren't feeling right and all of a sudden they threw a clot the next shift they're gonna be like well what was you doing you was here all day they wasn't you know they wasn't doing anything so that would be my word of advice try to you know really stand up for your patient and advocate but in some cases you know if you feel something in your gut still isn't wrong and you've done everything you can just document up to your best abilities but i've done that before like had this gut feeling that something was wrong and i just kept bothering this doctor and they finally just gave me what i wanted and of course something was wrong so they'll fold eventually you'll get you'll get there so just don't take it to heart you'll have those days where it's just going to be like you feel like something is wrong no one will believe you just you know ask your charge nurse ask your backup people for help get a second opinion talk to the doctor hopefully it'll work out but always go with your gut remember i told a couple weeks ago i went with my gut not a couple weeks ago a couple weeks ago i posted a video about i gave some patients some medication and something in my gut even though i had did the 30 minute check on them something told me to go back again and check on them and boom she was half dead in the bed because she was taking pills period go with your gut another thing that i will say to a lot of new grads struggle with is like time away from the job and like mental the mental toll it can take on you especially like this past year it's just been like rough to say the least but a lot of new grads i feel like and it kind of depends on the personality type too they take work home with them and you just have to shut it off you're here for 12 
hours or whatever once you go home once you clock out let that go please let it go because you can't be worrying about everything you did at work because you're not gonna you need those days to recharge this is a very hard job nursing in general is a hard job and i have this this thing that kind of bothers me about you know i feel like the newer generation of nurses i don't know how it was years ago because i wasn't like really worried about anything but i feel like everyone in nursing school wants to go to like icu or er they have that in their head they want to go to icu er or like you know the mother baby people but this excludes them but you need to realize that are you prepared to deal with the amount of stress in these high critical situations you know er you never know what you're going to get you can have slow lulls and then it'd be like boom trauma this it's just you just never know with er but especially icu are you prepared to have these conversations and interactions with these family members are you prepared to have the death talks to see dead bodies to clean people up to have these hard conversations of your loved one is not going to wake up you know what would you like to do are you able to be there and witness all of that it is very traumatic it is very hard on you you know you will have days where you just feel like you can't handle it and you know taking that time off and away from the floor you need it it is so important for your mental health not to carry that baggage that happens on the floor or at work with you home you know i had a conversation with you know a lot of new grads but one in particular sticks out you know one new grad was worried like i didn't give this medication on time i don't know what it was i think it was an antibiotic and i was like you're running around with like seven patients and everyone is kept alive yeah they missed that dose of antibiotics but you got it to them before your shift was up would you rather that happen or would you rather you know your patient in this room like fall and crack their head open and then they get a, a brain bleed and then they die you have to look at it that way and you can't take all this home like it shouldn't be three o'clock in the morning and you're texting thinking about this like oh my god am i gonna get in trouble or i'm just so worried about the patient blah 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 like what if this happened you can't know once you clock out go home go home do whatever you need to do journal meditate exercise watch a movie drink in moderation we all like a good drink girl i do too i like, like happy hour and cocktails um you know whatever you need to do to release go on a little amazon shopping you know spree all within moderation treat yourself go out with friends do something to get your mind whatever you need to do to get your mind off of work do it because you will get burnt out and you know this past year we saw a lot of people battling mental health and burnout because they just really people could not deal with the amount of death stress all of that that goes into it people really saw i think mainstream saw what nurses and healthcare workers deal with so i think they have that kind of idea a little bit better but recently in the past years i've seen everybody i want to go to er i want to go to icu i mean the icu everyone wants to be in the icu but baby you are not meant for the icu and it's just something to be aware of even with med surge med surge baby that is just like a different ball game you know it really is you are down in the trenches like it is you know you have five six seven eight patients all needing your attention people are way more sick these days you know you're it's gonna take a toll on you so if you don't have that capability of putting you know your work aside once you clock out this is not the field for you you need to work on that you need to go ahead and get it done now i'm warning you because you will not make it in this field you'll make it but you won't be mentally strong and you need to be mentally strong to handle this because at the end of the day no matter what you have going on you need to put your game face on go cry in the med room for a couple minutes and then come out take your break and then come out you can't be getting all that emotional and letting you have to put your emotions and everything to the back to make this job work because at the end of the day you need to be quick and on it for these patients so to wrap it up those are kind of like my well i have one more tip also have all your supplies don't come to work any kind of way this is a pet peeve for me you know i've been guilty when i had like a bad day like not i left my pencil bag or something somewhere but have you your pens have your pencil have your marker have your scissors 
always have flushes on you i don't care what anyone says unless you know those people that we don't talk about i'm gonna put their name up here unless they're in the building you know you're not supposed to have anything on you i don't know what they expect you to do keep running to different rooms to get tape and um flushes i don't think so but anyways always have your flushes in your pocket put some in your coat pocket put some on your wow if you have a wow put some in the room at the beginning of the shift put them everywhere because i it's literally my pet peeve where people pop their head out the room can i have a flush can I have a flush? Do you have a flush? And it'll be the same ones th multiple times in a row, each room. Girl, if you don't go get you some flushes. So always have your supplies, have your flushes, have your tape, your scissors. I have scissors that hook to me, my marker in my pocket for dressing changes because when I don't have it, it's just a hot mess. So always have that. Put in your locker, you know, some extra deodorant, a hair tie for the females or guys if you have long hair. Put your extra pair of scrubs in there, some extra shoes get you a water bottle stay hydrated always take your break i don't care what you have going on you can at least take a five ten minute break chug your protein drink chug you something i don't care do it because it's gonna at the end of the day you gotta take care of you to take care of these patients so get your charge nurse do whatever you need to do to get you your breaks but also be prepared for your shift come in with all your supplies ready to take report period um those are my top tips, I think, pretty much. I've said it before in other videos. I think it's understood that you need to, like, look up your patient before report. Always lay eyes on your patient during a bedside or shift report. Go make sure, you know, their IV is still in and good. If they have oxygen, it's still good. SEDs, check your patient out. Make sure they're alive and okay. You know, I think that's pretty understood, but I'm going to say it. Um, and, you know, always look at your labs in the morning before you're starting. Maybe your last doctor's notes. You know, do your assessment. When you go in for your to give your patient your medication, go ahead and do your whole assessment. Review their labs with them. Make sure they have any questions. You can do all that within 15 minutes. I guarantee you. Give them their, unless, you know, things happen dressing changes or you know someone's gonna take a while with your peg feeders i can go into that a little bit more um your flow of the day i always handle my heavier patients i save them for last i knock out my people that are easy my walkie talkies they don't have a lot of pills they don't have a lot going on i can knock them out really quick i like to save my heavier patients you know my pegs people i'm gonna be in there a while they have a lot of dressing changes or, you know, it's someone that is two or three people to move or handle, blah, blah, blah. I save my more acute patients to, like, get their med pass, like, out the way. I make sure I check on them during report change, make sure they're good. And then I go get handled those walkie-talkies, blah, blah, blah. The quick, easy patients. And then I can spend that time with them so I'm not, you know, rushed in those rooms. Because you'll start with them first, I found out. And you'll just get so behind with everyone else it's just it's just not the move for me so start with your simple patients to your heavier patients always check on your patients during handoff make sure they're live make sure their iv is good whatever look at your labs in the morning before you or beginning of your shift before you start running around and doing stuff any kind of doctor's notes or communications look at those two give your medications while you're giving doing your assessment i just pull that person's medication Go to their assessment, looking at their labs, looking at their notes. I do that all at the same time, and it goes by, like, so quick. So, you know, I can go more in-depth of, like, how my day was on the floor, but this is just, like, generic little tips real quick. But I think that's pretty much it, how to survive. Be confident. Don't be too cocky. Have your voice. Make friends with the older people be nice to everyone stay away from bad influences have all your supplies be ready be open to learning and be open to you know um criticism constructive criticism not hateration we're not doing that um you know delegate go with your gut those simple things will help you a lot in the long run also my biggest one Turn that mess off at the end of your shift. Bye. I done clocked out. It's time for it to all end. It's not going to be on my mind. Find a healthy coping mechanism and move on. Period. So if I missed anything, because it was kind of all over the place, because I think my coffee, my afternoon coffee kicked in. 
um just let me know comment down below if you have any questions or have any more tips anything else you want me to talk about or go over i think i'm in my next video a lot of people want to know about my research role now since i've stepped away from the bedside so i'll go into that i think in my next video but i have some beauty content coming up too mm. so yeah you know you guys thanks for subscribing check me out on instagram do all that comment share like I thank you for the support um, and y'all have a good weekend. I think when you see this, it'll be like approaching Memorial Day. So be safe, have fun, get your few little drinks out there. All right. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.